Hola, ¿qué tal? Soy Pau, la vikinga mexicana, y en esta ocasión vamos a hablar con Johanna, quien es una practicante de la religión que se llama Ausa Tru, que es la religión de la mitología nórdica en Islandia. Así que, vamos. Hi, good day. Uh, welcome, Johanna, and thank you for being today with us to talk about Ausa Tru. Uh, thank you. So, Could you please uh, let us know who you are? Uh, um, yeah. Well, I am Johanna Harradotter and I'm an Icelandic uh, citizen and, and uh, I am a, a teacher and a journalist and I'm also a priestess of Ausatru in Iceland. Okay, and um, what is Ausatru? Ausatru is uh, really the oldest uh, religion in Iceland. Um, it came with our settlers here to Iceland and, and maybe years eight or, or 900 and has been here forever since. And it's uh, based on the uh, Nordic uh, mythology. Uh, you say that it came to Iceland. Where did it come from? It probably came mostly from Norway at that time mm -hmm. and from the other Nordic countries because our settlers came from there and, and also from Britain. And uh, this Nordic religion comes from the Norse countries of, from Scandinavia. Okay, and I read that the religion, this one was banned in the year 1000. Uh, what was the reason for it? Well, it's really political. It was all political in, in, in those days. And it was a political reason for that. And it was really um, a deal that people made, that they were um, allowed to, to be also true, but uh, they had to um, lay off some of their practice in the religion that they had to lay off and, and so on. And, and, and it was really a deal that people made in those old days. Okay. A really bad deal. It was in 1972 that, okay. that uh, the religion all got again uh, the right to be a, a legal religion in Iceland. But, but it had always lived amongst the people. But um, there was no religious group of any kind until okay. 1973. So it was just mostly practiced like yourself, like yeah. you felt part of a group which was actually not established. Yes, that's true. And also, you must uh, realize that uh, this Nordic uh, religion is, of course, uh, so connected to our culture, because the sagas and, and, and all our old literature is all about that. So, uh, so we read about this religion and uh, what it was like in those old days in our sagas and, and, and our history, actually. So it's a, a big part of our culture. Yeah. It is more like a way of living rather than a religion. Yes, you could say that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what are its uh, kind of main beliefs or main practices? Uh, well, it's, it's all kind of, uh, it's very, um, nature based because um, uh, what we do is that we hold what we call bloats which are usually held outdoors and it's very connected to to nature for example the biggest bloats are held at uh, solstice uh, winter solstice which is the uh, old yule which is older than, than the Christian Christmas, actually. Mm -hmm. And then um, summer solstice, and then at the Eucanox, when the day is the same length as, as the night. And then we have other bloats, which are also connected to, to, to nature, like the first day of summer and uh, so on. Okay, and do you also do sort of celebrations on Saturdays? Or not really? No, no, not really. Um, Saturdays have nothing to do with it, actually. Um, we meet at Saturdays in our a clubhouse, just mm -hmm. for fun and just for talking and so on. But, but that are not bloats. That's not really religious. 
Okay. Um, those religious bloats that we have, they are held outside and they are not connected to any special days. They're rather connected to, to nature's uh, events. And like, what do you do in those blood? Well, it, some people say it's just like a family meeting, actually. We held it mostly uh, uh, outside and we always have a, a bonfire every time and we have our horns which we use for the celebration and um, we call upon the gods and the goddesses and, and we often uh, connect that to what's happening in, in real life at that time and people gather and, and talk and think for the god things and good things in their lives and, and uh, talk about what they would like to see next and so on. So it's really a gathering of people talking and exchanging views. Okay, and do you have uh, leaders in the religion, just like in Christianity or in Catholicism, you have the priest or like the Pope? Well, yeah, we have the Godis, which are kind of priests, which are um, leaders, as you say. They are the people who help hold together the groups and each squad they has a group around them and it's usually connected to to local places and uh, then we have um uh, al Kode, which is the highest priest which is a kind of a status of the one who uh directs people to be together and and and, and holds everything together the the society Okay, and does this person need to have any special education or go to school yes, or something or just like within the community? Yes, there is, of course, um, things that you need to know. And there's a two years training before you can be a Gode. And before that, you have to be chosen from the people that you will be uh, leading. Okay. And for that, you need to have knowledge of uh, the Nordic mythology. And you have to also, um, of course, we are doing all kinds of ceremonies like name giving and, 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 and weddings for people and burials and so on. And of course, you need also education from that because these are legal um, ceremonies that you need to um yes you you're a kind of uh you perform that from the state of iceland as well okay. so there's there's a lot of education needed for that what are some similarities to what we usually know of christianity of the baptisms the weddings the uh, also burying people uh how do you mean how uh, to compare or? Yeah, in a way, like for Catholic people, maybe you go to the church when you get the baptism and then you get water, you know, like then there is a mass or something like that, some kind of rituals, like how do you do it differently related yeah, well, to nature? Are, yeah, well, there, there are rituals, of course, but they are not the same as in Christianity. They are a little bit different in, in, in many ways. And usually the difference lies in that, that the people who are in the ceremony, for example, let's take a wedding, they are more, it's more about them. It's not about the gods really, because when people get married, they make their own vows. They're not promising anything to the gods, they are promising, they're giving each other a promise. So they make their own vows. And uh, they, they say words to one another and, 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 and the guest can say something as well. And, and these um, rituals are quite different from, from Christianity, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, you, you have mentioned, um, like that you gather uh, people, like is this religion only practiced in Iceland or elsewhere in the world? No, it's practiced in many other countries, but uh, we were actually the first ones to 
uh, take uh, also to back as a, as a religion, as a religious group. But there are religious groups of also through people in many parts of the world, really. There are many in the other Nordic countries. There's in Germany, there's in, in America, Australia. There, there are also two people everywhere. Do you gather sometimes or contact uh, these groups? Or? No, we are really, as, as a group of also two people in Iceland, we only, um, our group is only the Icelandic group. Because if you want to become also true in Iceland, you need to uh, sign in at the Thioskra, the registry office. So only Icelandic people or people with Icelandic Kenital RID can join, actually. Mm -hmm. So we are not, we are not uh, as many think uh, leaders of the world in this sense, not at all. And uh, we really don't want to be either. Mm -hmm. Do you know more or less how many people uh, are currently uh, signed up for or are yeah, signed up as Osatru? Uh, last I knew is about 5,300 people in Iceland. Yeah, which is a quite large number <laughs> of yes. people compared to the size of the uh, population in Iceland. Right, yes. And, 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 and what's more even is that... Uh, uh, not everybody who's in Ausatru is registered into our uh, religious group or, or, because we, we really don't um, require that, that. We don't, we don't uh, tell people to do that. That's of their own choice. And we do um, ceremonies for so many other people that are not registered into Ausatru. Also we for foreigners? or just people who are registered to live in Iceland? No, also to people. There's a lot of, of ceremonies that we have here that are uh, done for foreigners mm -hmm. coming to Iceland just for those ceremonies. Mm -hmm. And that is, of course, mostly weddings, mm -hmm. but also name givings. Okay, some people were asking me about your gods. I have read a large list of the god and goddesses. Uh, I don't know if you would like to mention like few of maybe the ones that more the most common or more important to you. Well, the thing is, um, we have so many gods and goddesses. And it's a thing that with, with, with our gods and goddesses that sometimes one of them is in 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 uh, is highly held for some years or something while something special is happening in your life. Odin is the all, all father of of Ausatru. He was the father of most of the other gods, and and in in Sweden he was most popular of all gods in Nordic mythology. But in Iceland, uh, Thor, the god Thor of thunder, the thunder god. He was more popular in Iceland and has always been, and still is. And that's probably because he is a very strong character and, and his symbol is really the earth and all its powers. Mm -hmm. And we live pretty clo close to the earth's powers. So it's, it's not very surprising that mm -hmm. he is probably um, the favorite. And then we have the goddesses, for example, Freya and Thrik. And, and so many other gods, but these yes. are probably the ones that most people know. Yeah. And then well, we have a Jinx, which is Loki, and, and many people favor him because he is, yeah, he, he has some faults like all of us have, and, 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 and we know his, his Jinxy in ourselves sometimes. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have seen all these Marvel movies where they portray your gods. Like, um, yeah. what do you do? You think uh, their description is accurate to what you know of them, or are they kind of portraying them in their own way? Well, I kind of look at that as a kind of a joke, actually. Of course, I mean these. Uh, we are not not very strict on this. I've seen those Marvel movies and, and, and I think, okay, 
this is partly true and partly not. And what I think is that people are allowed to have their own views of things they read. And, uh, and I really don't feel bad about that. It, it's, it's just quite all right that uh, the Nordic mythology uh, has uh, some other images than the ones that I see. And in one way, you can even say that it's good to keep the legends alive like this. But of course, it's not the same as I think. Okay. I look upon the gods maybe in a different way, but that's my way of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, also, some uh, people were asking me whether uh, there is heaven and hell for you. Does it exist? Uh, we do not believe in good and evil. All things have both their po uh, positive and the negative sides. So we don't want to look at the world as either bad or good or heaven or hell. We, we don't see the world like that. Mm -hmm. It's many shades. Do you have any mantras or kind of rules? Like, um, I will say that maybe in other religions, like you have to pray several times a day on a certain direction or eat a certain type of food, something like that. Do you have anything, you know, like a manual in a way? No, not, not in that way, because for us, the gods are our friends. We look at them as uh, friends. And we see the gods in everything, and we see that they have uh, faults and good co parts of themselves, just like we have. I mean, we're all good in a way and bad in another way, and it's the same with the gods. And we see them as our friends, and we talk to them. And you don't need a special time for that. Just your thoughts when you want to express yourself with someone and you need someone that's stronger than you or can give you advice, we talk to our gods. And they answer, of course. Do they usually answer in like nature or? Yeah, very much. It's, it's a kind of a lifestyle, as you say, because we all know that when we are in need of, of um, somehow stronger than ourselves or advice or something, we talk to ourselves. And where the answer comes from doesn't really matter. It's an answer. And maybe you're talking to yourself. And I always say, if there's a God, and I say, if there's a God, he's inside yourself. Whatever you call him, whether you call him Jesus or Buddha or Thor or whatever, God's here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just very happy to be talking to you because I am finding myself in life. So suddenly, you know, somehow I, I talked about Ausatru and it's like, like it, it is a call in a way for myself as well. So I am super happy to be able to share uh, this talk with you and for you to give me the opportunity to get to know more about what you practice. and. Yeah. Uh, would you like to add anything else? No, not really. Uh, of course, I could talk all day, but but mm -hmm. I'm glad that you are thinking about those are true because people who come to us, it's a, it's a funny thing because we always say we do not bring uh, religion to people. We never do that. But when people come, they say, why didn't you tell me before? Because I feel I'm at home at last. And that's what we do. We, we tell people, you're welcome if you want to talk to us, because we try to have an open mind and our gods are symbols of the world out there. And they are also symbol of other people because I can see maybe a Freya in you or even an Odin because you are you are gathering some truth that you want to bring to other people. We can see the gods in ourselves and in other people. And if you can do that, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. yeah.
I, I just feel like when I was looking, for example, to start university, I had maybe to choose from five subjects. But then if I had to, you know, like if I were to know everything that was available around the world, maybe I wouldn't have studied what I studied. And I feel the same way about religion. Usually we, we know about, I don't know, maybe five of them, but there are like so many, maybe not religions, but other ways of living that we are unaware of. So maybe, you know, talking to you and like everybody who is listening to us, like will find themselves like that they don't have to belong to this certain uh, like top five religions in the world, but there are more options. Mm -hmm. And even if they are not um, belonging or like, how can I say, like, if they don't want to change religion, at least take the best of any, anything that it's available. A religion only works if it makes you a better person or if you feel better. That's one thing. And, and, and what we talk about with the kids that have confirmation, which we call Silvesta, we do not talk about religion to those kids. They are only 13 and 14 years old and they are becoming grown-ups. And we talk about what really matters in the world. What matters in the world is that, that you are happy that you have what you need and you don't really need as much as you think. You need food and you need clothing and you need housing and then you need friendship yeah. and you need trust. And to make young people ready to go into the world, you need to teach them how to get along mostly with themselves because this is the person that I will live with forever so if I don't get along with myself, life will be hard. So learning to be your own friend and learning to live with other people and to live with the nature as it is. If you can do that, you'll be fine. Those are very wise words. Thank you so much again for your time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.